Well, this is the Crystal Caves of Bermuda. Not just, not just caves, but grounds as well. Magnificent royal farms behind us, and you'll see. Oh, I thought I was going to just go right down into the caves and looking around me, there are gorgeous gardens and flowers and magnificent trees. Oh, it is all magnificent. Not just the underground, but when you're underground, you'll find it even more magnificent. The caves are, without doubt, the premier visitation for all visitors coming here. We have 85,000 visitors coming a year, uh, which is a, quite a percentage of our total tourism number. Well, this is an adventure for any child. To go into the, into the cave, go underground, see the lake, see the stalagmites, the stalactites, and all the other formations that are there. It's an adventure for any age kid, really. Yes, in fact, we like to think that most of our visitors are children. <laughs> well, this is the entrance to the cave now. Hi. Hi, I'm Lenny, your guide. I'm Jesse. Nice to meet you, Lenny. Hey, all right, you ready to do a little spelunking? I am so ready. <laughs> Crystal Caves was discovered about 101 years ago. Two young boys were out playing cricket one evening and one of them lost the ball into some bushes. And when he went to discover the ball, he found it gone into a very small hole in the ground. Then with a lot of bravado, they opened the hole up, went and got some flashlights, well, it would have been candles in those days, and then descended into the cave. And that's how the Crystal Caves were discovered. And then they were developed as show caves. When it was first opened, it had a wooden staircase leading down 100 feet to the water. This just was not successful for the number of visitors who wanted to come. One, of course, was the famous American humorist, Mark Twain. Wow. But I've got no, no quotes of any words that he spoke during that trip. <laughs> Then, in 1912, work commenced on the construction of a tunnel, all hand dug. Four years later, it was open, and that is the entrance today. Oh my gosh, we are in a completely different world down here. Oh yeah, isn't it amazing? Yeah, it is. This is just about where the boys came down to the cave, and that is 130 feet above sea level. When we get to the bottom of this flight of steps, we will be at sea level. And the tours actually came down through this entrance for about seven years before that entrance was blasted out. Oh, those poor tourists. Yeah, now can you understand why you blasted that entrance out? I'm really happy you yes, did. Yes, it is scary coming down through there. Both of the caves have three of the different ages of the five ages of Bermuda geology. So we have the Upper Town Hill, the Lower Town Hill, and the Walsingham Formations. These are the three lowest, and there are two on top of that in Bermuda's history uh, as, and geology as a series of sand dunes. And one of the most incredible parts of it is it's a wonderful laboratory for sea level rise. We can, we can demonstrate to people how the sea level has been at least 13 feet higher than it is now and up to 60 to 70 feet lower. This is what the inside of a limestone cave looks like. These hills from which the cave was formed began formation more than 30 million years ago from the remains of marine life. As those shells and fossils accumulated, they were broken down into tiny fragments, blown into dunes, and then hardened and formed these limestone hills. The rainwater seeping in from the surface seeps down, dissolves the limestone, creating voids. Those voids collapse into larger caverns creating this cave system and all the passageways. As you can see, those are some very deep underwater caverns. Oh, that's, I thought it was, I'm seeing the reflection. That's incredible. Yeah, that's not a wall. That's a re reflection of the ceiling above, but that actually goes down that's as really deep as deep. 60 feet, yes. The water is really clear down here. Oh yeah, it, it stays clear like that because there's no sunlight in here. And there's no photosynthesis, no algae forms, no microscopic organisms can survive here. And it also replenishes itself with the tide twice a day. So this water is constantly moving in and out of the cave. So, so there's actually an ocean entrance somewhere in a different part of the cave? Yes, there is. And that will be right in the back of the cave. And that passageway is about a half a mile long. Crystal Caves is just crystalline white. It's brilliant. 
Fantasy Cave has been touched by the soils in the geology of Bermuda, and this has caused the formations to have an orange hue. The formations are in giant chandeliers. They're, they're just incredible, quite, quite different from crystal caves. And that's why we have so many people. Over half our visitors visit both of the caves. This is a floating walkway that we're about to go across. Nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> you won't get seasick or anything like that. Right. Uh, but this bridge was first installed in the early 40s. Before that, the tours used to actually go to the back of the cave by boat. But if you look over here, these are our organ pipe formations. And in times of yore, the older guys used to play tunes on these pipes. How many years would it take for something like this to form? They form on an average of about one cubic inch every hundred years. So this one right here, maybe 70 or 80 cubic inches. Mm -hmm. So that would make this formation at least seven to 8,000 years old. And as you can see, they're wet. That means they're still forming. So they still have a lot more growing to do. They're Those, just babies. Th these are babies, <laughs> yes. And the 100 years that we've been coming in the cave, very little has changed. Well, it, it's a whole different experience from you know, uh, the norm, the beaches, uh, the beautiful scenery above ground. It's like a world unto its own, mm -hmm. you know, and you're separated from all the hustle and bustle that's going on above the world. You get a chance to escape, and you know, if you come with a, a partner, you and your partner can just take it all in. It definitely makes your trip to Bermuda much more romantic. For a hundred years, we have been an ecotourism site. It is totally natural. The only thing that is really man-made is the tunnel and the floating walkway. So this was the original eco-tour tour. The very original and it'll always be an eco-tour. <laughs> we don't have to do anything to make it greener.